Hi everyone, how's everyone doing here today? Thank you for watching. So, here we are yet again. This is something I've talked about before, you know, briefly. Um, the shooting in Georgia and everything, and, you know, we're seeing the usual fallout, and it's going through the same cycle, and to be honest with you, I don't really have anything to add. I've talked about it before, not recently. But this one time, it kind of stuck out to me because, you know, we're going into a presidential election. And the one thing I always said is that until, like, politicians decide to really change things, this problem's going to continue. And here we are again. And already I'm seeing this the cycle with the excuses repeated to, like, now's not a good time to talk about this. Thoughts and prayers. You know, when is an effing good time? Okay. Tell me when, by all means, you know, I'll mark it on my calendar and then I'll bring it up, but, and what's going to change? Probably nothing. Um, the only details I know at the moment is that uh, the shooter was 14 and supposedly he got flagged by the FBI and uh, obviously the parents knew about this. So, uh, in their divine wisdom, they thought the best way to resolve this was to buy him an assault rifle. Really? Really? You thought, but what is a 14-year-old going to do with an assault rifle? When I was 14, Legos was my thing. You know, you want me some vintage space Legos? I was happy, I was as happy as can be. Okay, the only guns I ever played with were those cheap water pistols that were, you know, multicolored and translucent. Okay, I wasn't that big into guns. They didn't have shooting games like they did back then. You know. You want to teach a kid how to shoot? Fine. Get him to play Call of Duty with him. What the hell? And I, I don't know about uh, Harrison Walt, what their take is on this. I haven't heard anything, but... Uh, I haven't heard anything from Trump either, but in the past, like at the one shooting, I think it was in Iowa, where he just said, like, well, you know, we just need to move on. Really? Oh, that's your solution. Just move on. Okay, so he's not going to do anything. And J.D. Vance was at some kind of rally or gathering, and his thought was, well, you know, it's just a way of life. Well, no, it doesn't have to be a way of life. But therein lies the problem. It, it just goes back to the thing I said originally. Until you get, like, serious lawmakers that are willing to make the change, you know, nothing's going to happen. The NRA is not going to go away. And yet, down the road, if Trump becomes president again, oh, he'll go to the, another ARA convention, you know, and give his little talks there, you know, after his all thoughts and prayers. When is yet another shooting after this one in Georgia? Somebody brought up an interesting question, and... It, some of this lies on the gun owners, where, you know, you had some pretty irresponsible parents. The father, who's now facing criminal charges because of what he did, he proposed a question. I'll bug you out here. Anyhow, he said, could you imagine if all the gun owners just decided to one day give up their guns? I mean, that's a pipe dream, of course. But that's part of the, the problem. If you guys were willing to give up your guns... If somebody said to me, if I was a gun owner, and they said... You have to empty up your gun racks, give it all up. No more hunting, no more shooting, you know, no more target practice for recreation. None of that. Gone. Zip. Would I do it? The answer is absolutely 100%. Now, I don't own guns, so that's easy for me to say. But in relation to uh, some other things, like, um, like I like to do cosplay. I like to do Star Wars cosplay. I like to do it for certain events, for certain charities. And also fun. It's recreation. It's fun for me. I also do design work, and sometimes I like just to do computer art just for the fun of it. Now, if somebody said to me, you have to give those two things up for the rest of your life, never again, you know. Uh, by profession, we'll find you a different job where you'll be doing something totally different. You won't design ever again. In doing so, that would either prevent school shootings or that would greatly reduce school shootings considerably. Would I do it? And the answer is yes, in a heartbeat. I wouldn't even think twice about it. Would I miss it? Obviously, yeah. But that, to me, is a worthy sacrifice. But no, we've got all these gun owners who, you know, all talk about the thing about, you know, whether it's politicians or owners. It's just, 
well, yeah, it's tragedy, it's bad, this and that, but we need more guns and everything, stuff like that. You know, it's... Yeah, you look at some of Trump's rallies, he's got a bulletproof glass shield in front of him. Why? Because of an assassination attempt? Okay, I get it. Why not just give everyone in that audience a gun? Because nobody can stop a bad guy with a gun except a good guy with a gun. You too, Don. Why don't you start packing, you know? Hey, if somebody tried to take the shit at you, shoot back. That's all. Is that the answer? No. Same thing with J.D. Vance. Why is he behind a bulletproof class, you know? Is there a bulletproof class preventing some of the other ones? Because at Trump's assassination, uh, a bystander got hit. Thoughts and prayers for him? I don't see any solutions. Gunn just put his fist up in the air, and did he say, hey, uh, you know, when I become president, I'm going to make a... this kind of gun legislation or pass laws to prevent shootings from happening? No, of course not. Not that I've heard. Why? Because he likes that good old NRA blood money. And, you know, just to be fair, this is bigger than Trump events. It's not like a problem that they created, but, you know, they're involved in it. They don't care. So I can tell you right now, a second term of Donald Trump and J.D. Vance won't change a thing. In fact, if they, God forbid, get elected, a second term, you know, it's a, like I said before, it's only a matter of time for that in an NRA meeting. Vance will be there, too, and he'll... Enjoy some of that blood money as well and just say, hey, it's a way of life. The only way people like them and some of the other dumb politicians, like Ted Cruz, who's a netterian, blame mental health, yet when a mental health bill was passed a few years back, the GOP voted against it. Another politician whose name I'm blaming just said, well, there's nothing we can do about it. Okay, so, you know. Oh, and he homeschools his children. How convenient. Not everybody in the world can afford to do that. It would be nice, though. You could offer uh, a law, okay, so you're not doing anything with the Second Amendment or trying to, uh, you know, provide gun control, but you could make it easier for people to homeschool their children. But that would be socialism. You know, Second Amendment, baby. Uh, You can vote out politicians like this and vote in politicians that will try and make change. I think Kamala Harris and Tim Walls would, though I haven't... Like I said before, I haven't heard anything, just to be fair. But I have a lot more faith in them than I do in someone who just says, well, we need to move on, or, you know, it is what it is. The only time people like them would make a difference is if Donald Trump gets a call saying, we regret to inform you, Mr. President, or Mr. Former President, I should say, Baron Trump is no more. J.D. Vance, I think he has two daughters. I know he has kids. I'm not sure, if it, oh, God, if he has daughters. These poor things. Anyhow, if he gets a call and saying one or more of his children got tragically shot, I would never wish that on anyone, I'm inclu- up to and including them. But if that happened, only then would they see the reality. And I'm not even sure if they would even do anything then at that point. I really think that, you know, they don't bank so much stock in people, but the death of one of their children, only then they would spring into action. I mean, I'm being generous here because they don't der- deserve generosity. No politician does who, you know, doesn't want to make the change. In the meantime, you know, like I said, it's up to gun owners to be more responsible. Like parents, you know. Like I said, instead of buying your kid a gun, buy him a a video game, a PlayStation, something like that. Play Call of Duty or whatever shooting game is out there. A lot safer, it's a lot cheaper, and nobody uh, gets killed. They say put guards in school. That's been tried before. I, you know, I, I really don't want to go through all the back and forth, which I've talked about in the past. Even though I don't know that much about it, I just know that until you change anything, we're going to be here again, and we're not going to see anything. This is what we've devolved into, you know, our country. That Second Amendment carries more weight than the life of children. That every now and then, I'll st- when uh, there's another school shooting, I'm sure it's happened already that gun sales have gone up. Well bully for the gun manufacturers and people will post videos because when some politicians talk about change you're going to get the usual tough guy uh, like he's in his basement like just try and come and take my guns as if there was a time a politician went door to door to confiscate weapons it's never happened it's just a stupid lie that gun lobbyists have fed into you and you bought it so now it's like more guns the merrier And some will say, well, it's not my fault, I'm a responsible owner. Okay, fair enough. Okay, but you still give in to the culture. Like I said, 
I'd be willing to make a huge sacrifice to protect children. Unfortunately, there are a lot of gun owners there that wouldn't do that. You know, they just think, I didn't cause the problem. I'm responsible, so therefore I shouldn't have to do anything. So, once again, we're going to go through this other cycle. Uh, I'm sure I'll hear more about it. And then after that, things will kind of settle down. And after the presidential election, there'll be another shooting. And what then? We'll be back to where we started from. And the cycle just keeps going on and on. Thank goodness I don't have children, because I, I sympathize for parents. I can't imagine what it's like sending kids to school, you know, knowing that a shooting could happen to one of them. Yeah, I really can't wrap around it that we've, so many of us have reached a point where a firearm means more to us than the life of a child. I know that sounds pretty cold. I know I'm going to get a lot of backlash for that, but it's, it's just how I feel, and it's like that we become accustomed to this, like yet another shooting. Anyway, thank you for watching. I hope you understand.